Analysis, research and evidence is used to inform decision making across government and analysts work as part of multidisciplinary teams and in collaboration with other professions and functions to improve the outcomes for the public. To support this, we've created a series of bite-sized learning, introducing some useful analytical terms and concepts which you might find useful in your role and whilst working with analysts. In this video, I'll be talking about what makes a good sample for analysis and how to identify problems with a sample to assess evidence. A sample is a subset of the population. Analysts use samples for surveys and other types of research when it is too impractical or costly to test the whole population. But when a sample is used, analysts have to make sure that the sample is representative of the population. If it is not, this is called sampling bias. In the picture, you can see that sample A is more representative than sample B by including all the demographics of the interest. This can happen by pure chance. So how do we make sure the sample represents the relative population? The first thing to do is to make sure you have a good sample size. A sample that covers 50% of the population is more likely to include all the relevant demographics than a sample that covers 5%. Some big surveys have samples of thousands, but some studies use much so smaller samples. In reality, most samples can only achieve a very small proportion of the target population. The other key ingredient of a truly representative sample is randomization. To be truly random, each individual within a population must have an equal chance of being selected. Especially in a large sample, randomization increases the likelihood that the demographics of the sample match the demographics of the population. When an analyst collects data, they have a range of clever techniques for randomizing the way the sample is chosen. For example, they don't always interview the person in the household who answers the telephone. Instead, analysts may ask to speak to the person who is next to have a birthday. This eliminates the bias caused by household members who use the answer the telephone. Well, a good sample size and strategy of random selection will go a long way to ensuring that the sample represents most variations in the population. Analysts should think carefully about the groups that are affected by the policy and take extra measures to ensure they are representative in the sample. They should include these in their report along with any actions they took to address them. When you're assessing evidence, you can have a look out for these by asking yourself the following questions. Who is likely to be affected? Has the analyst for my piece of evidence thought about this and addressed it in the sampling strategy? And when and where was the data collected? This makes sure it is relevant in terms of time and geographical location. Remember that a piece of evidence you are assessing may not always have the same aims as you. If you are using it as evidence, you need to also think about the people who will be affected and check whether this piece of analysis addresses the same concerns. There are things that you can look out for when assessing a sampling technique. Non-response bias is what happens when individuals do not respond to the invitation to take part in the survey or piece of research. Individuals who readily take part in surveys or research are known to have different characteristics compared to those who may be more reluctant. To get a fully representative sample, you want to include individuals who may not readily take part. For this reason, every effort is made to secure the participation of those who have been randomly selected for the survey or another type of sample. In reality, few surveys can achieve a 100% response rate, but the response rate should be recorded in the report. Quota or convenience sampling is where there has been no random selection of the sample. The data collection is simply stopped when the target number of responses is reached. An example would be a phone-in survey of this type that is used on the radio or television. These types of surveys do not attempt to record the views of individuals who aren't listening who, or who do not wish to phone in. For example, say you are working on a policy to diversify the nighttime economy and encourage a wide range of people into the city centre in the evening. What would you look out for in the piece of evidence? Firstly, you want to look out for when was the evidence um, collected. You also might want to look at the sample, including to ensure it's representative of age groups, ethnicity and accessibility, as the current city centre offering might have having an impact on the following characteristics. There are a wide range of things that might impact on a policy and you're considering when you're assessing the evidence. You might have different concerns to the researcher. You know what to look out for in a sample to see if it addresses your questions.
We hope you find this useful. If you want to find out more, take a look at the analysis function YouTube channel at gov.uk or sign up to the analysis function newsletter by emailing analysis.function at ons.gov.uk.